So now we are going to carry on down the path and we're going to see what we can find in Leith. So there, there are more plans to develop active travel that way. We've got a pedestrianised street that we're going to go and check out. Um, so yeah, let's go and see what we can find. Let's go do it. Let's do it. All right. Well, it's absolutely a beautiful day. It is gorgeous. I'm so happy <laughs> that we've had the weather with us, so, yeah. I think that uh, when I first looked at the weather uh, for today, it was like 70% rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh no. Edinburgh's been kind to us today. Yeah. But, it, I mean, you, you brought up the point and you made the point that, you know, hey, we're in the middle of the, of the city and we have access to high quality transportation corridor, but also recreation. It, it's just, it's so important for people to have access to these types of spaces Absolutely. to connect with nature. Oh yeah, and you know, we saw it during lockdown. So just to be able to sort of just go out and commune with nature became so important to, for everybody's sort of well-being, I think. Um, and you sort of, you can take for granted when you're in the city, you sort of get used to the buzz of traffic and you think that, right, that is, that is the city, but there's so many sides to Edinburgh um, and having access to that linear green space, to, to trees and just to, to take a moment is so important. Yeah. So, so, so important. And, you know, for some communities, access to linear green space might be sort of the only access to a park that they have might be like a, a bit of NCN or an old railway path. So, yeah, these spots become sort of increasingly important. Um, you know, Scotland is one of the most nature depleted countries <laughs> in the world, unfortunately. So we, we don't have huge amounts of biodiversity and sort of wilderness. So Is the bits that true? That we, yeah, yeah. Has it mostly been turned into farmland then? Well, um, yeah, there's a lot of agricultural land. A lot of our hills are quite sort of nature depleted. Um, so you'll see the, you know, the beautiful highlands of Scotland, but <laughs> not very many trees on them. So, yeah. Right. OK, so here we are. Yeah, Sorry. look at this. And I believe this is part of the Leith Connections project. So, yeah. yeah. So again, we have a nice, you know, bike ped modal filter here. Very nice. How long ago do you think that this had been uh, transformed oh, gosh, away I think from it's, motor vehicles? Yeah, th so this is relatively new and I think it's still under construction as part of the Leith Connections uh, project. So also, um, funded through uh, Sus Trans's Places for Everyone um, grant uh, together with uh, Transport Scotland. Um, so yeah, I think that it's still sort of underway. Um, so I think we might be able to catch a bit more of it if we head that way, actually. Okay. So, well, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. We'll swing the camera around yeah. just to get another view of this. And we see a little bit of transit happening here. We've got the bus rolling through, uh, but we do have a, a little seating area down here. And again, you know, orienting the seating so that, you know, people can have, you know, carrying on a conversation as well. If we kind of look up, we can see some more. Yeah. Very beautiful. Yeah. And you had mentioned that this is sort of uh, kind of considered more of a, a suburb of the, the big city. Yeah, so here we are in Leith. So we're a couple of miles out of the city center, um, but it's now very much part of part of Edinburgh. Um, and we're just standing on a bridge over the water of Leith. So where we started this morning, yeah. uh, we were just a few miles uh, up uh, and yeah, sort of south of the city. So mm -hmm. here we are at the north edge. You've got the Firth of Forth, um, 
just out there, which is the, the big estuary that comes in just north of Edinburgh. Um, so yeah, Leith is, is a thriving part of Edinburgh right now, and to be able to have that connection across um, right through from the city centre out to Leith, uh, free from traffic, is you know it's vital for people to be able to to walk and to wheel and to cycle and to sort of feel healthy while they're doing that. So yeah. Yeah, and I'm noticing this this street over here looks like it's uh, been probably restored to original cobbles. Very, very interesting. So we did see a transit go through there, but I'm wondering, oh yeah, there's a car going through there as well. But of course, with the, the cobbles, that's going to encourage much, much slower speeds. It would be a lot slower, yeah, yeah. Through so that space, and there's a, the toast to the a cafe right there yeah. along that. Should we go and check it out? Yeah, let's go look at this. Yeah. This is very interesting. I do wish if my colleague had been here today, he would have been able to tell you all about this yeah. project. <laughs> oh, and here's some, here's some signage here. Very good there pass go. for everyone. And this looks like it's a part of the city. That's right, yeah. So Edinburgh City Council has been working really hard to, to try and bring sort of investment into walking and cycling infrastructure. So yeah, it's, it's great to see a lot of this infrastructure popping up now around the city. Very nice and some more bulb outs over there we see some traffic calming elements very nice expanded pedestrian realm and then again some of the original beautiful stones and again you can see how the walkway over here has been expanded out Follow this round and see where we end up. Ah, here we go. Very cool. Leith Connections, here we are. All right, and here is a little information board. Very nice. And again, some nice seating, some nature integrated into the seating. And again, modal filter here, doing its job. Little bike parking for the local residents. Brilliant. Great. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And then here we are. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to head, oh, it's a couple of miles just up this road right through to the city centre and this bit of infrastructure is from the last, it's completed maybe two years ago okay. um, and yeah, I'm interested to hear what you think of it. Yeah. So you were saying that this is relatively new? Yeah, relatively new um, and quite transformative. So um, a lot of what you see here will be new. So the tram 
extension only opened up about a year ago, connecting um, Leith to the centre of town by tram, and with it, uh, this lovely bit of segregated cycling infrastructure as well. Whoops. Sorry. There we go. Oh. The impact of an upstream salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Do you guys use that terminology too? No. Salmoning. <laughs> I've heard that. Well, it's a, a, cy a cyclist going the wrong way is a salmon. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, a salmon going upstream. That's yes. right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, this is a, a great example of, you know, carving in um, space as you can. It's not exactly truly, truly high comfort, but at the same time, it, it gives um, an amount of mobility for more people to, you know, cycle through this area. Yeah. Otherwise, it would just be, I'm sure, when this was all just automobile infrastructure. Oh yeah. It was. It was nasty. No, that's right. Before, um, you know, you'd be chugging up the hill, um, and yeah, if you were on your bike, you're having to mix right with the with the car traffic and. It was not a pleasant experience at all, especially when you're sort of puffing and panting for, for breath as you're going uphill with all of the, the car exhaust and the fumes and, um, you know, just having to stop and start with the traffic lights with cars. Not a pleasant experience and probably for only really confident cyclists. Whereas now what we have, you know, it's maybe not completely perfect, but a much, much better experience. Right. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's a bit of so a bit of mixing, but um, definitely space for getting about on your bike, space for people walking, uh, and then we've got the trams alongside. So, yeah, pretty neat. Now, if we were to go a block or two to either side uh, for like a, a a parallel route, are there quieter parallel streets, or are they worse? and more uh, car infrastructure. Yeah, we've got a few, couple of arterial streets, so just uh, parallel to us here on the left, we've got Easter Road, no cycling infrastructure on that yet. Yeah. Um, maybe a bit less car traffic, um, but I certainly know, like if I were coming from Leith to town, this would be the route for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good attention to detail. Again, high quality pavers all of that, and really trying to manage the known conflict that is going to be presented with pedestrians getting on and off the transit. So again, an environment where people riding bikes should not be coming here and expecting to go fast as they possibly can. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is very much, um, Leith Walk is a street with loads, loads of shops, loads of restaurants. It's very much a, a place. Um, and I think with the design that we have with the cycling, you can very much see that. Yeah. Um, it's and we, not... do, we do see we have our cycle signal there. <laughs> very modern. That's well right. done, well done. So it's a, it's a, it's a good, there's a lot going on on this street. You've got the trams, um, you've got cars, um, and you've got a lot of shops, a lot of people. It's a residential area as well. So there's quite a lot to manage in the space. Um, but certainly what we have now is so much better um, than what there used to be. Right. And would this be considered part of the NCN? So this particular section isn't part of the NCN. Okay. So the National Cycle Network is almost like, you could imagine it as like a bit of a active travel trunk road. So it, it, it makes up some, but not all of the active travel networks that we have. Um, and in terms of how we're planning the network, it's really important that we make sure that the rest of the active travel network connects in with the NCN and that we reroute the NCN where we need to, just to, to keep it relevant and to make sure that we have that connectivity and those links across um, our walking and cycling infrastructure. So yeah, earlier th this morning, we went from the NCN 75 to the NCN 1, and we encountered a big gap in the network where we were having to interact with busy traffic. And yeah. um, 
Those are exactly the sorts of projects that we're trying to prioritize to fill those missing links so that you have one continuous safe experience. Right, right. And uh, so this particular facility, who manages it, who owns it, who built it? Um, so this was primarily driven by the City of Edinburgh Council. Um, Edinburgh Council, I should say, has got a lot of bold ambition for active travel. So it does have a commitment to reduce vehicle kilometers driven by cars by 30% uh, by 2030. It's also recently um, passed a circulation plan, which is a, a basically a, a plan, a blueprint for the city of how the transport is going to look for the future, taking into account uh, the needs of walking, cycling, um, an expanded tram network uh, and the rest of it and sort of looking to sort of manage that in the best possible way that right. will uh, make sure that we're meeting our climate ambition. So yeah, Edinburgh's got quite bold plans uh, for the future. So I think this is just the beginning. Fantastic. So a little, little question uh, technology wise here. Um, we're waiting for our signal here. Does it know we're here or do we need to press uh, that button <laughs> behind us? Have. We have been here for quite a while, so yeah. maybe I better press that button and okay. we'll see what happens. All right. We'll see if that makes a difference, but. I was wondering if, uh, if it was a double we whether it had a sensor of some sort uh, or. Got me there. Yeah, so not sure. But you can de definitely see the, the path of travel for bikes through this complicated intersection. They get the light going that way. I'm surprised that they're not giving us the light, the light at the same well. time. Yeah, it's odd because the pedestrians there's a no have left. got a green light as well. Yeah. Uh, and there's no left, so. I say we go. Should we go for it? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Have you by chance uh, heard of the the uh, Idaho stop or the Colorado uh, safety stop? No. So it is basically some of the states are starting to wise up to the point that bikes are not cars. Yeah. A person riding a bike is not the same as a person driving a car. And so if a person on a bike comes to a stoplight, yeah. like this stoplight, just yeah. turned green for us, Lovely. anticipated us, yeah. that was nice. But if we come to a motor vehicle stop sign, uh -huh. we treat it like a yield. In other words, uh -huh. you pull up, you scan, if it's safe to go, you go. You go, I love that. A stoplight is like this stoplight here. Uh -huh. You pull up to a stoplight, you come to a stop, you scan, if it's safe to go, you go. You go. So, yeah. sorry, is, yeah. this the, is this the law in the States so that that's totally fine? In Colorado, in Idaho, and I believe in 16 other states, that's okay. now the law, yeah. And that sort of thing, I think, is a game changer yeah. in terms of really acknowledging the, the experiences yeah, the that people have on bikes, because yeah. especially on a surface like this, yeah. you know, we're chugging uphill. Yeah. We don't particularly want to have to stop if yeah. we can, if we can avoid it. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. I can't lie. There, there has have been um, a couple of times where I will break a red light. So it is illegal here in Scotland, <laughs> but I'll just use my use a bit of my discretion and use the Colorado. What is it called? The Colorado method. That one is called the Colorado safety stop. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so if I ever get pulled up for it, I'll just say... I'm from Colorado! I'm from Colorado! <laughs> Dang it! I'm doing the Colorado safety stuff. <laughs> it is definitely frowned on here in Scotland, but who knows? It just doesn't make That's sense. Here. So many of these signals, I'll be stopped at a signal. There's absolutely no rhyme or reason. Like, even this one. Oh, this one's welcome. I need to catch my breath. <laughs> I understand, but with this one, we have absolutely no indication here who are we watching what are we looking for are we just watching the the little man here yeah it's not clear maybe it's not done maybe they didn't uh, finish putting in the infrastructure for the bikes here or are we too far forward this guy's just going for it but i think he's braving it 
Yeah, this side comes. They've got greens. We don't want to go now. What you have in some parts of the UK are toucans. You might have seen them in London where you've got your pedestrian signaling and your cycle signaling together. So if it's a toucan crossing, yeah. then if you're on your bike, you're good to go. If yeah. it's not a toucan crossing, it can be a little bit ambiguous and um, sometimes you've just got to risk it and yeah. hope for the best. Yeah. You'll, you'll appreciate this. Uh, uh, what we're talking about is toucan. Two can go, both the, the people, the pedestrians as well as the people on bikes. And uh, my very first time I ever heard of that was in Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh -huh. They have quite a few toucan uh, installations there to get across busy roads. It's how they get uh, people through what they call their neighborhood greenways and their uh, sort of their quiet residential streets that are bicycle prioritized and they called them toucans. Yeah. But I kept thinking a bird, a toucan, a bird. <laughs> yeah, no, because yeah, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of sort of animal derived infrastructure. So we've got elephant crossings here yeah. as well. Oh. Obviously you've got your zebra crossing, your toucan, so yeah. Very good. We're getting the whole zoo land experience. It's quite the uphill, isn't it? It is. So this is us right now coming bang into the city centre of Edinburgh, so we've left Leith behind us. We're at the top of Leith Walk. This is the low emission zone entry point. So just from the start of June this year, actually, um, Edinburgh's low emission zone has come into force. It's actually four low emission zones across Scotland. Um, that have, so you have to be sort of, uh, your vehicle has to be compliant with modern vehicle standards to be able to go into the city or you're faced with a fine, so. Or better yet, you're not in a vehicle at all. Yes, obviously <laughs> it doesn't apply to us. <laughs> all right, I We're, think this is We are the, the ultimate end. low emission vehicle. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, what would be really great would be if they made it a congestion charge, mm -hmm. um, such that all vehicles had to play a stipend to come into the center, so we'll have to see. Um, yeah, obviously yeah. the low emission zone is just new, but yeah. um, it could be the start of bolder me measures to tackle congestion in the city center, so. I would assume that, you know, uh, like a diesel running bus, like that double decker that just rolled through, gets a waiver because it's transit, it's pulling a bunch of people. And so even though it's a diesel vehicle, yeah. Lots of emissions. Yeah. It gets a waiver because it's public transit My and there's lots of people. My understanding is that even public trans transit has to, to be that. compliant yeah. with the so they with probably have, standards. So yes. They probably have a grace period to get that transferred yeah, over to an electric been, yeah, vehicle. Yeah, yeah. There would have yeah. been a grace period just yeah. to, to get everybody sort of used to it and up to speed. So this is Prince's Street. This is just taxis and buses and trams. And then parallel, we've got Rose Street, which is pedestrianized, so, but you can ride your bike on it as well. And then behind that is George Street, um, which hopefully one day will be pedestrianized. The council has been toying with the idea for a number of years, so. And here we are, we're at Waverly. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, sorry. Let's pull off to the side. Yeah, so we haven't talked about Glasgow. Talk a little bit about Glasgow. Oh, yeah, so, uh, well, Glasgow is an interesting city because it has uh, a motorway that cuts right through the heart of it, um, oh, no. the M8. Um, oh, no. So it really, that really does sever the city, but at the same time, Glasgow City Council has got some very bold plans for active travel, and they are doing quite a lot quite quickly. So they've got the South City Way, um, lots and lots of plans to develop active travel there and right. quite a lot of support for it as well so it'll be a bit of a race between edinburgh and glasgow and uh, yeah hopefully in the right in the right direction and for your organization i'm assuming you're doing a bunch of work there as well we do working with glasgow as well um yeah we do yeah the city council i think is quite ambitious with its plans um but yeah, certainly uh, my colleagues in places where everyone will be working with them. Yeah. So yeah. Fantastic. 
And you had mentioned it earlier, we're here at the monument. Yes, the Walter Scott Monument. Yes, so Sir Walter Scott. And uh, I'm assuming he was from here. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess this is where we'll yeah. part ways. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been really been fun. Absolutely fun yeah. to be able to connect in person. It's a real joy. And uh, again, uh, thank you so very much and keep up the good work. Thank yes. you, yeah. Yes. And yep. you too. Uh, um, keep subscribed to the channel yes. and uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch. Very good. good. All right. Well, hey, All right. this is John and Amelia <laughs> saying goodbye from Scotland. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that uh, like button. Also the subscribe button too. <laughs> thank you so much. This is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health and happiness. Cheers. Cheers. Yay. Yay. <laughs> And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.